So now we'll go ahead and jump into purchasing. It's really very similar to, um, to doing any sales. So I'll kind of go quickly through some, some of the steps here. In essence, you're going to go ahead and start with a purchase order. This is the equivalent of your sales order in this case. So we'll go ahead and create a purchase order up in the top right here. Again, looking at the life cycle, it's pretty quick and easy. You know, you're going to create that purchase order, send it to the vendor, you'll receive the goods, and then you'll send out a bill and pay for those goods once they're received. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with creating an order. Again, we'll choose a vendor rather than a customer in this case. Um, up here, I do want to highlight, you can actually go ahead and choose to have this delivered to your address or to a customer address. So if you are going to be drop shipping any product, um, it's actually pretty great because you can have the purchase order just display that customer address that you have to fill in. Um, but it saves you the step of having to coordinate with the uh, vendor around where that actually needs to go. Of course, similar to the sales order, we have things like the order date, when we're expecting to have it delivered, um, what our preference is on shipping. Down below, we'll add in the amount and the products and amounts that we want to order. And then we'll go ahead and save and send that off to our vendor. And so now similar to when we um, send out a sales order, at a certain point, we're ready to package a sales order. So we're gonna you know, put a bunch of stuff into a box. In this case, now we're gonna take stuff out of a box and we're gonna receive our product that we ordered with our purchase order. So the receive is the equivalent of the shipment or the package just from the purchasing side of things. And so with our receive, we'll go ahead and choose how many products we received. It's gonna to default to assume that you received all of them, but that might not always be the case. So again, you can receive multiple times against one purchase order. In this case, we'll go ahead and assume that we received all of our products at once. And now we have a very basic little record here connected to our purchase order, just to mark that we actually now have this stuff in warehouse. And so again, thinking about our physical stock on hand, this is the point where it goes up. So in the same way that once we've shipped a package, that will make our inventory go down. Once we've actually received on our purchase order, that'll make our inventory go back up. Um, up here at the top, I wanted to highlight this, so I left the message up. Once you have created a purchase receive, you'll need to bill from what's been received rather than the purchase order. It's kind of an odd little thing that inventory does, but I wanted to highlight it in this. Um, it basically, what it's assuming is that you might actually receive more than once. So once you've processed that receive, you want to actually bill out for what's been received and not for the full purchase order. Um, it's a little bit inflexible around this, but I do just want to highlight it so you don't get stuck. Um, under the little receives tab here in our purchase order, we can go ahead and convert that to a bill um, to actually say that we're going to pay for what it is that we received. And so kind of jumping into converting to a bill, um, what it's going to do is when we bill off of that receive, it's going to grab the quantity that's been received and the purchase rate, and then go ahead and prepare a bill that we're going to then mark as paid to this vendor. Um, so again, very similar as creating a purchase order, creating a sales order. It's just products and quantities. Um, in this case, we're just saying that we're going to bill out for this. Um, again, this is where the, the financial or the accounting part comes in, where the bill for purchasing is equivalent to your invoice for sales. And so this is where your accounting stock is actually gonna be affected. And last but not least, once we have created the bill, now it's time to actually record payment for it. Um, there is a whole set of approval processes that you can build into books and inventory if this needs to go through any approval steps. Um, in this case, we'll keep it simple and we'll go ahead and record our payment for this. So this is basically saying that we have paid our vendor for this bill. Again, we'll go ahead and say how much we paid, if there were any bank charges, what payment mode we had, and which cash account this should come out of. Um, and then we can go ahead and save that. If you did pay it with a check or anything like that, you're able to actually attach a file. So you might wanna grab an image of that check and save it. Or if you received any receipt from the vendor, you might wanna scan that and attach it here as well. So you're actually able to go ahead and attach those files. 
And then lastly here, kind of similar to what we did with the sales order, I think it's good to highlight that this purchase order is really the parent record of this process. And so from our purchase order, we can see all of our bills. So all of the money that we've paid out for this order. And then we can see our receives, which is all the product that we actually got into our warehouse from this purchase order. Um, so again, really any questions around where things are, you always wanna start at the purchase order or start at the sales order and dig down from there.